So hello everybody. How are you tonight? Good, I hope. It's nice to see a bit of sunshine, wasn't it? Isn't it lovely? Aren't you glad the summer's coming? Great. Well, um, it was lovely last week. There was a lot of people who gave feedback to say uh, how they'd really felt last week um, was speaking to them. The subject matter we were talking about, um, liberation and being freed from captivity, whether it's in your mind or whether it's in your body or whether it be to do with all sorts of uh, uh, bondages that we get out ourselves into. And we had a lot of feedback that uh, people are really moved by that. And so we felt that we wanted to carry on that subject a little bit tonight. Um, but we're going to talk about unconventional rescues. Now, the thing is, when you use the word unconventional, you have to think, well, how do we define that? And it's because most of the time, when we're in a, a, a difficult situation, we tend to look for the obvious way out, don't we? We tend to think, okay, I can do this, I can do that, because most of the time, two and two make four, and we think if we follow that procedure, we will get out of the situation we're in. But often, we find ourselves in situations where we do what we think is obvious, but we still don't get uh, that uh, answer or that, <coughs> excuse me, that answer that we need. Now, uh, I think that you could use the word miracle to actually sum that up. Now, in this day and age, we have so much to tell us uh, how things come about. We've got science, we've got all sorts of things that can tell you, nah, that's not a miracle because there are reasons why these things come about. But in life, we know that there are things that happen where you just cannot explain it and you have to say something is going on, and this is what we're going to talk about tonight. It's looking beyond the obvious and the normal uh, for those things that are really quite incredible, and I'm sure you're really going to enjoy it tonight. I've got some wonderful things uh, to show you, but I just wanted to share something with you. Many years ago, I mean, my mum's my been gone a, a long time. I don't even know how long. I think it's maybe 14, 15 years, and uh, she had uh, to go into hospital because she was very sick and nobody knew what was wrong with her and it was amazing. She had consultant after consultant, uh, loads of tests and uh, nobody could seem to figure out what was wrong. And, uh, you know, we were really very concerned because obviously when you get a diagnosis, you can then start treatment. But if you don't get a diagnosis, what can you do? And she was getting more sick and more sick and she was in the hospital. And then something happened was quite remarkable. It was this. One evening, a junior doctor who was just very much in his early days of, of research and learning, doing his, all his exams, and no doubt incredibly stretched uh, in what he was doing, went into my mum's room and took her chart and started to read what had been said and the information and uh, had a little chat with my mum. And he left that room and he went to the consultant who was in many ways way above uh, in, in ability and knowledge. And he said, I know what is wrong with her. And it was really a miracle because this lad was so new to it all that everything was exciting. Everything was jumping off the page because he was learning. And the night before in his studies, he'd actually been reading up on the very symptoms that my mother was showing. Now, uh, I don't want to take too long, but I'll tell you, she had what was called good pasture syndrome. Now, if you go and Google that, you will find there is less than one in a million who find that that's going on with them. And it's so difficult to find because it's an autoimmune uh, problem that it's really quite hard to find. And where the problem was, was it in her blood plasma that was going through all the vital organs and basically rejecting them, saying, we don't like you anymore, you, you need to shut down. And um, once this was diagnosed, say, let's say it was the Monday, the Tuesday she was sent to Leeds where there is the blood plasma transfusion unit, the only one at the time that was in Europe, which she had to undergo 90 pints of plasma transfusion that day, and she started her recovery back. Now, I did that very quickly. That was something incredibly out of the ordinary that, you know, the doctors were just looking in one place. But when somebody else said, 
this is what I think it is, then the way opened, a way was made. Now that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And there's some incredible things for you to hear. And what I want to say to you, you may be in a situation where you have come to the end of yourself and you haven't a clue what to do. But if you are willing to say, do you know what? There is a way that can come if I just stop looking for the obvious and actually believe for a miracle. And uh, we want that tonight, don't we? So next up is for the kids. Are you ready? There's an, there's an unconventional rescue about to go on here and uh, then we'll take it further. But you're going to have a great time tonight if you're looking for it. I remember the Patch Adams film. Do you remember? He said to the guy, how many fingers am I holding up? And he kept saying, four, four. And he says, no, look beyond. And then suddenly the revelation dawned. He could see eight. Why? Because as he looked through, the whole vision was different and then he got his miracle. So that's what's going to happen for you tonight if you look for it. Are you ready for it? Okay, let's move on. Thank you. All right, so first of all, just um, a gratefulness for what to me is a miracle this week because uh, I now listen this side through my skull because I now have the technology that goes with the implant, uh, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely incredible, and I've, I've waited 50 years to be able to hear that side. And uh, it's pretty unconventional listening through your skull, isn't it? Okay, so um, there's a painting here, and I want to talk a little bit about this for just a minute. I... I found a couple of verses in the Bible that I thought um, were really important in the context of this. It's in the New Testament in, in 1 Corinthians and chapter 2 and verse 7 and 8. And it says this, We speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. And this is the key bit. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I'll come back to that in a little bit. That secret wisdom idea was picked up by Tolkien when he wrote Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. It was picked up by C.S. Lewis when he wrote The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and the Narnia Chronicles. And we're going to touch that principle tonight as we talk about unconventional rescues. Now, this painting on the screen is a painting by a guy called Maurice Retch. And uh, he painted this painting sometime in the early 1800s and the painting is called uh, is called checkmate and uh, the painting is of a guy who's playing chess supposedly with the devil and uh, forget the flipping angel at the back I don't know what all that is about for crying out loud but in the picture what's interesting is that um, it's called checkmate now if you know anything about chess, which I know very little, checkmate is what you accomplish when basically you have won that game and there are no more moves that can be made because now your opposition has been caught and the game is over. So Wretch painted this picture, but there were two guys who were looking at this in the Louvre where it was for many years. And um, as they studied the picture, one of those guys was a was a, um, uh, an expert chess player. He had been a, an international champion. And uh, he was intrigued by this image. And so he sent his friend on to look at some other pictures. He said, I just got to study this. There's something not quite right. And uh, after a while of studying this picture, he got very excited and ran. And um, he brought his friend back and said, look, he said, I've figured it out why why I found it so confusing, he said, because when I look at the state of the board, it looks like the guy has lost because of checkmate, but he made this statement, he says, but the king has one more move. Now, it's a very interesting statement for me, raised in church. I mean, that's all I need. I could sit down now. The king has one, <laughs> one more move, because I was raised with the whole understanding, even when you think of the crucifixion of Jesus, how he was called the king of the Jews, and how... They said to Pilate, take that notice down because, you know, we don't see him as our king. But Pilate said, what I've written, I've written. And, uh, of course, 
People who have kingdoms are kings. So I, I was raised so I can get excited about the fact that in, in life, when it looks like the game is over, the king has one more move. What I did also find intriguing about this was just the whole concept. First of all, concepts of the devil can be more influenced by medieval, um, con medieval ideas that, that have been absorbed into the the Christian understanding of, of the devil and hell when actually when you study the background of this whole issue of you know whether there is something opposite to us the, the word Satan doesn't mean the devil in hell the word Satan means adversary and uh, the ancient Hebrews understood that they used to talk about a Satan not the Satan a Satan and by that they meant an adversary somebody whose objective is to work against you to defeat you and in this picture we've got that image now now I would also propose to you that if if the devil or Satan is an adversary you are probably the worst devil you'll ever meet you will probably cause yourself more problems and more issues than if there was externally, physically, a being called the devil. Now, you might think that's, that's really not Christian doctrine, but I would say, actually, you're wrong, because the Apostle Paul said this. He said, I find that what I want to do, I don't do, and what I don't want to do... I do do, and he said, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me from this body of the flesh? So, so an adversary, forget the fact that some of you, that there is a devil with horns or whatever who's trying to destroy you. Some of you, you're trying to destroy you because you won't come to a knowledge of the truth. Now, let me also say what wretched got right is that life is a chess game. Life is a chess game in that you make a move and other moves are made... And you didn't choose to make those moves, but you then have to respond to the movement that happens in life that was not your move, it was the adversary. Now, you, by your attitude to life, by who you are, by your weaknesses, insecurities, can make those moves that then you are trying to counteract that move. And, of course, the problem is in the chess game of life, it's very easy for us to feel that there's checkmate, that, that we're stuck that it's the end of the game and there's nothing we can do. But this guy looked at the conventional and then he started to think unconventionally. And when he looked unconventionally, he said, it might be that it appears that there is an adversary and in the game of life, there is checkmate and the game is over. But he said, but I can see that the king has one more move and it's not over. That's good. Learn from your mistakes is a good lesson. Seems to be one of the lessons that most of us don't accommodate into our thinking. I like the fact as well that um, what he was saying about how to get these miners out sounded like stupidity. Just like we said at the beginning, none of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I, I can honestly excuse you and understand if you were to say that the cross is ridiculous it doesn't make sense was the words he used that doesn't make sense but I think from this image which goes on from the painting that we saw it, it's interesting because we have these 33 miners trapped 2,700 meters underground and uh, their exit and escape route is blocked by a huge stone now again, for me, raised in church, you only have to tell me two things tonight, I can sit down, I've got it. The king has one more move, and the exit route is blocked by a huge stone. I mean, I've got the crucifixion and the resurrection done and dusted, I'm good to go. But for some of you, we need to be a little bit more purveyors of hope to express the situation, because now it's not the chess game as in the painting that we saw but it's the chess game in the sense that these miners going about their business made their move to do their job and they find themselves trapped underground. And here's the interesting things that I want you to learn tonight. They couldn't dig their way out. You can't dig your way out. Most of the situations you find yourself in life when you are trapped. 
Much as you try, you can have all the expertise of a miner, you might be a good digger, but you cannot dig your way out, and that's where we learn from our mistakes. One of the other things they did, two of the guys went along the, the mine to try and find a way out because there were supposed to be escape tunnels that had been dug and there were ladders in the escape tunnels for them hopefully to climb out of these escape tunnels that were also doubling as air vents. And so they climbed a ridiculous way up this ladder and then all of a sudden the ladder stopped. The ladder didn't go all the way to the top. What they thought would be an escape route only led them so far, but it came to a dead end. Learn by your mistakes. Learn by your mistakes. The alternative routes led nowhere. So, so we've got this scenario where without external help, the truth is they are trapped. Now, one of the reasons I'm here, one of the reasons we're doing this, one of the reasons we bother is because we want to be purveyors of hope because I sincerely believe that there are situations in life like the chess game where if somebody can't help you that the king has one more move or situations in life like these miners where we are trapped. If someone can't help you to bring hope that there is an external source of help then the truth is we will lose the game and we will forever be trapped. But the gospel is all about saying you won't lose the game because there's always one more move beyond where you thought life had gotten you to. And if you'll allow that move to take place, then you will win the game. When you're trapped in the deepest of pits, when there's no way out, when you can't dig your way out or climb your way out, the truth is there is an answer to that solution, but it has to come from outside of yourself. And so we saw this amazing thing, which when you've seen the film makes a lot of sense, and uh, we've talked about it a lot this week. But um, the mining engineer thought, if we just go the direct route, if we just do what's expected, but of course the problem was too strong, too tough, too difficult to break through. So the guy who wasn't the mining engineer, who was from the government of Peru, who was the minister of mining, he had that crazy idea that if we go at an angle... Which, of course, he explained as, well, so you're saying aim to miss. Now, I have to say that if you were an onlooker at the crucifixion of Jesus, if ever there was a situation from a guy who had popular following and seemed to be the next Messiah and now allows himself to be crucified by the Romans, <coughs> you have a perfect example of somebody aiming to miss. In everybody's eyes, he was aiming to miss. But, of course, it was the fact of aiming to miss that allowed him to hit because that unconventional reasoning took him past the stone and into the refuge so that the guys in the refuge could find their way out and know what it's like, what it feels like to be set free from the place that you're trapped in. What it feels like to win that chess game and to be helped to do it. And they're all free again. When, uh, uh, one of the wonderful phrases you'll see on the next uh, little bit is, is great. And, and I love this. This is one thing I wanted to remember. The guy said about deviational measurement. I love that. Deviational measurement. What a great statement. He said, so you're taking into account deviational measurement. I want you to know that the gospel is wonderful because it doesn't get stuck in the ritual of religion, it doesn't get stuck in some dead orthodoxy, but actually the wonder of it is it has a deviational measurement. It comes from another angle, not from any other religious angle that you thought, but it comes from another angle. And if you understand Jesus and the cross and the gospel, through that you will find that a tunnel has been dug to the place where we are to help us to set free. I love the fact, this is what I was going to say, that one of the things you'll see in the next video when it shows you them getting set free, the lady says they're all free again, they're all reborn. Because when you get out of that, that is new birth, that is being reborn, that is being born again. Now I believe there's something about believing that brings a new optimism, a new or renewed faith that there is a way through. And my role here today is to tell you there is a way through. That in your life, in the situation you're in, the king has one more move. Now you say, well, what does that mean in practical terms to me? It means that if your belief and your faith and your hope will not look at the borders finished and look at the adversary as having defeated you, but say, do you know what? I believe because of what God has done in Jesus, there's one more move. I can't make that move. He makes that move, but I can allow that move. 
I can't dig my way out of this tunnel, but the truth is if he's dug from the side and I can find that space that he's dug and I'll get into the capsule, it will take me back to the surface and I will live again. That's the truth of the gospel. And I believe what happened in, in this amazing event that we're now three weeks on from Easter and we said we'd need three weeks of, of comments about this, that when Jesus died on the cross, it was like that obscure thing being drilled and there was a rock in the way. But you see, the wonderful thing is that the rock was moved. And the resurrection is the same story as that movie. The king had one more move. It's the same story as the escape capsule. There was one more move that was provided. If you can just receive that and accept that and allow hope to rise in your heart. In your life, the king has one more move. In your chess game, it's not over. The king has one more move. In your, in your sanctuary where you're trapped, there is a tunnel that's been cut for you so you can come out. But it's unconventional rescue. What religion has tried to do is conventionalize the story of Jesus and the gospel, but it's always been unconventional. It still isn't when you release it from that model. Now, what does it mean? It, do, it means what it means in the context of your life, of where you're trapped, of what you need, the hope the sense of forgiveness, the sense of help, the sense of belonging. It brings all of that when we find that thing. So I want to just pray a little prayer. Maybe you'd like to pray it with me tonight. Did you like to say, maybe, maybe you're like those miners. You feel trapped 2,700 meters underground. You can't dig your way out. You can't climb the ladder because it doesn't go far enough. Or maybe you're like the guy in the picture. You think, I've, I've played all my moves and it looks like I've lost. But the truth is, there is a moment we can really understand that if we can receive what is being done for us, because Christianity is not about what you do, it is about what has been done. And you can receive that. I believe something supernatural, something mysterious, something amazing happens that allows us to find that way, as that lady will say in just a moment, where we know that we have been reborn. So I want to pray a little prayer. Here's what I want to pray. You might want to say it in your own heart. Lord... I receive the hope that you bring to me today. I take the route that you are opening up for me. And I thank you that it brings freedom to my life because the king has one last move. And I receive that move. I receive it. I make it mine. And I thank you in Jesus' name. And I believe that, 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 that the, 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 the way for my freedom has come not because of the conventional, but I believe it's come because you aim to miss. You missed all that is the conventional, but brought the unconventional. And that's my hope tonight. That's my life. And I receive it. Help me like these miners that we're about to see to emerge from the depths into the brightness of life and give thanks to you for the deliverance, the unconventional rescue that you have established for us.